Today's review is of this Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 CU DIM memory. It's rated at DDR5 8400, dual channel kit, 48 gigabytes in total capacity. And yes, that means you're going to need an Intel Arrow Lake or Core Ultra 200S platform, in this case, Z890 motherboard. Of course, I'm aware you might not necessarily own an Intel Core Ultra 200S platform, and therefore you might not want any of this memory in your own PC. Just in case that's true, I'm also going to include a little background on CU DIMMs, or clocked, unbuffered DIMMs. When Intel launched their Core Ultra 200S Arrow Lake processors last year, I received a number of pieces of hardware to help me out because it was a new platform. A number of motherboards, including this MSI MPG Z890 Carbon Wi-Fi, three processors, Core Ultra 5, Core Ultra 7, Core Ultra 9, and also some memory. This memory, which looks like conventional DDR5 memory. However, it's clocked very highly. 8200 mega transfers unbelievably highly in fact, and the explanation I was given is that this memory is CU DIMMs. I'd never heard of CU DIMMs. The C stands for clocked, the U for unbuffered. And when I take one of these modules of memory and I remove the heat spreader, that is the magic piece of hardware. I'll show you a close up of the magic part. Let's take these two modules of G-Skill memory and I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison. As is the modern way, these DIMMs have memory chips on one side only, the other side just has a piece of foam behind the heat spreader, and you can see those memory chips are arranged in a line. In the center of the module and above the memory chips, we have the PMIC or Power Management Integrated Circuit and various other bits of hardware, in particular the SPD or Serial Presence Detect chip, and also a number of inductors and capacitors. You've heard us refer to SPD. This is where the settings for the memory modules are stored. And when you look at CPU-Z, you can see the SPD profiles are reported. When you're in the BIOS of your motherboard, you can choose which profile to enable. Generally speaking, you click on XMP for Intel or Expo for AMD, and that's the profile that you run with. That profile is guaranteed to work, provided the memory is supported by your motherboard. However, the other profiles exist as a kind of fallback. The CU DIMMs module looks very similar, except it has an extra chip. This is the CKD, or the Client Clock Driver. So yes, CKD stands for a thing that's actually a CCD. You can also see another change between the two memory modules, and those extra components are the lighting LEDs. So when we're looking at the business side of things, there's a small amount of difference. When I flip over the modules, and we look at the heat spreaders, this is the Trident Z5 RGB module, and this is the sleek new Trident Z5 CK module. As you can see, they're fundamentally the same. However, this does not have a CKD, but does have RGB lighting. This does not have RGB lighting, but does have a CKD. I've packed away the G-Skill, because after all, this is a review of Corsair Vengeance RGB CU DIMMs memory, but it is worth taking the briefest of looks at this Kingston Fury Pro, and the reason for that is this chip here. This is buffered memory. I've used this RDIM Expo memory in my reviews of AMD Threadripper. The buffer chip is an extra chip, in addition to the memory chips which are under that Fury logo there. So this CU DIMMs clocked unbuffered memory doesn't have a buffer chip, but it does have that extra CKD chip. And now we understand that, let's take the heat spreader off the Corsair memory and take a look beneath. And you won't be surprised to see it is similar in layout to the G-Skill Trident Z5 CK memory. After all, it's DDR5 and CU DIMMs. You can see the eight SK Hynix memory chips. You can see the CKD. You can also see the PMIC and the SPD, and also the LEDs for RGB lighting. Arguably the biggest difference with this Corsair memory is that the PCB has lots of lettering all over the PCB, which makes it easy to identify the components. But this doesn't address the question of why you might want CU DIMMs to go in your Intel motherboard, 
or indeed why CU DIMMs have a CKD chip. The function of the CKD ReDriver chip is to support higher clock speeds, it's to maintain signal integrity. So where regular DDR5 memory tops out at 6800 or 7000 mega transfers, CU DIMMs start at 8000 and go north of that, and at Computex we saw memory running at 10,000 mega transfers. That's the CKD part, but as to why you require it for Aralake, well here it comes down to suspicion. Essentially, Intel needed all the help they can get. They asked the memory manufacturers to supply really fast memory, and this was the solution. It's a tweak to conventional DDR5 memory. It's an extra chip that allows them to jack up speeds by a thousand or two thousand mega transfers for not a huge amount of extra cost. The really significant part being that this is exactly the same key as regular DDR5. Regular DDR5 memory and DDR5CU DIMMs both plug into the same slots. In other words, you can plug regular DDR5 6000 or 6800 into this Z890 board. And you can plug this Corsair Vengeance RGB CU DIMM memory into your AMD motherboard, and you can be fairly confident the AMD memory controller won't have a clue what to make of it and indeed doesn't require it. If you're looking for a new chair, then definitely go and check out boolies.co.uk. They offer a whole host of gaming and office chairs that come in a variety of different finishes and different colors. This is the test PC I've been using to benchmark the various sets of memory I've used. And as you've already seen, the motherboard is an MSI MPG Z890 carbon Wi-Fi. The graphics card is a Palette GeForce RTX 50 80 game rock. Clearly I'm using different sets of DDR5 memory for benchmarking. That is after all the whole point of this review. There's a crucial Gen 5 SSD under the heatsink. The processor in question is an Intel Core Ultra 9 285K and the cooler is a Fantex Glacier 1 360. I have the BIOS setup screen here and I've enabled XMP. That's the only change I'm making to the BIOS other than setting fan curves. You'll also note Gear 2 is one of the settings. With Intel you have Gear 1, Gear 2, Gear 4. With Gear 1 the memory controller runs at full speed, but this only applies to DDR4 up to 3600 mega transfers. Gear 2 applies to DDR4 and DDR5 in the range of 3300 to 9000 mega transfers, however the controller runs at half speed. You need Gear 4 to run memory above 9000 mega transfers, but here the controller runs at a quarter speed. So increasing speed slightly on your memory from 8,400 to 9,200, uh, you get more mega transfers, but it's gonna hurt performance. The memory we're using here tops out at 8,400, so this is not a factor. It's gear two all the way. Here we are in Windows, and the lighting is set to a steady red color. It's very consistent, I like the look of it. I can't see the individual LEDs through the diffuser. It's impressive. But let's open Corsair's IQ software where you can monitor temperatures, check out the profiles of the memory. But for me, IQ is all about the RGB control. I've turned out one of the room lights to give us a better view of the RGB and I think it looks absolutely excellent, completely flawless and equal across the modules. I like that a very great deal. And we move on to the testing charts. We're starting with Geekbench 6 Multicore. This is a benchmark test that barely uses the RAM. Monitoring the power showed the draw was under one watt per module. We've got five sets of memory on test. At the bottom of the chart, G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB DDR5 6000. And a significant step above that, G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB DDR5 6800. In the middle of the chart, and only slightly ahead of the 6800, we have the Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 8400. And it's effectively a tie between the three sets of CU DIMMs. In second place, we have G-Skill Trident Z5 CK DDR5 8200. Top of the chart, it's Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5 8200. It's surprising the Corsair Vengeance 8400 doesn't beat the two sets of 8200. It might also be worth noting the Kingston Fury Renegade runs at 1.45 volts, where the other two sets of CU DIMMs run at 1.40. The second chart is Cinebench R23 Multicore. This benchmark also barely uses the memory, it's mainly about the CPU. At the bottom of the chart we have the Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5 8200, and top of the chart it's DDR5 6000. 
In other words, the order is pretty much upside down. In handbrake running an H.264 conversion, we saw moderate power draw at the memory, 3 watts per module. However, the results were very mixed. Bottom of the chart, it's the Kingston Fury Renegade DDR58200. In the middle of the chart, Corsair Vengeance DDR58400. In handbrake using H.265, the results are pretty much a tie. Power draw at the memory is a mere 2 watts per module. Bottom of the charts, we have Corsair Vengeance DDR58400. Top of the chart, G-Skill Trident Z5 6000. It's safe to say the memory plays very little part in this benchmark. In 7-zip decompressing, there's very little to choose between the different memory kits. Bottom of the chart, it's the Corsair Vengeance. Top of the chart, G-Skill Trident Z5 DDR5 6800, by the tiniest of margins. 7-zip compressing benchmark, there is some separation, and we saw the memory drawing up to 5 watts per module. Bottom of the chart, G-Skill Trident Z5 DDR5 6000. Second place, Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5 8200. Top of the chart, Corsair Vengeance DDR5 8400. Speed wins the day. In the ADA 64 memory test, we see the memory drawing up to 6 watts per module, and as we'd expect, the memory is fully loaded. In the memory bandwidth test, we have the G-Skill Trident Z5 DDR5 6000 at the bottom. Top of the chart, just as we'd expect in this synthetic test, Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 8400. The ADA64 memory copy test doesn't quite follow this form. Bottom of the chart, it's the DDR5 6000, followed by the 6800. Unexpectedly, the Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 8400 slips to second place. Top of the chart, G-Skill Trident Z5 CK. DDR5 8200 and some gaming tests Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy at 1440p bottom of the chart Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5 8200 just above that but quite a step up in the 1% lows Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 8400 the picture is equally confused in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy at 1080p. Bottom of the chart, it's the G-Skill Trident Z5 CK DDR5-8200. Top of the chart, it's the Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5-8400. So we have CU dims both at the bottom and the top of this chart. Far Cry 6 at 1440p. Second from the bottom, it's the Corsair Vengeance DDR5-8400. And top of the chart, Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5-8200. You will note there is very little separation between the different memory kits. And it's hard to draw a conclusion from these results. Finally, we have Far Cry 6 at 1080p. Middle of the chart, Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5-8400. And top of the chart, it's the most basic kit of all, G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB DDR5-6000. Before we get to my conclusions about this Corsair Vengeance RGB 48GB kit of CU DIM memory, let's discuss pricing. This kit rated at 8400 mega transfers is priced at £389.99. However, you can buy a kit rated at 8200 mega transfers for £276.99, which is about £110 cheaper. To put this in context, if we look at G-Skill Trident Z5CK, a 48GB kit of DDR5-8400 will cost you £261, while a 48GB kit of DDR5-8200 will cost you £227. Prices of CU DIMM's memory are clearly a bit peculiar because Kingston Fury Renegade 48GB of DDR5-8400 will cost you £350 at the moment. To put this in context, a 32GB kit, i.e. 2GB per chip rather than 3GB, of G-Skill Trident Z5 DDR5-6000 will cost you £120. CU DIMMs are clearly expensive, but this specific kit of Corsair Vengeance RGB looks very expensive. And we come to my pros and cons, and I'll show you some RGB B-roll while I discuss these points. Pros, the good points. This Corsair memory has excellent looks with top quality RGB lighting. Secondly, the performance was good on our Core Ultra 9 test system, but as you saw, it's variable, depends very much on the benchmark you run. 
Thirdly, we had zero problems and good stability. That was true of all of these memory kits, however. Cons the negative points. The price of this particular Corsair kit is crazy high. Corsair has other kits that are very similar in specification, but we haven't tested them, that are much more closely aligned with the competition. Secondly, you need to use Corsair IQ to get the most from this memory to set the RGB lighting. And as we know, plenty of us don't like using these utilities. Thirdly, CU DIMMS memory is only compatible with Intel 800 series motherboards and Core Ultra 200S processors. Overall, I'm giving this Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 memory 7 out of 10, and I rate it as worth considering. Do please check us out at kitguru.net, and also, we're on TikTok.